talking about some other discrete probability distributions. So, uh, the next one is a negative, the negative binomial random variable and this is the name is very uh, uh, suggestive. Uh, we, were, we took the, uh, we considered the binomial distribution, which where the random variable was representing the um, number of successes, where the number of trials is fixed. So, you had um, n trial, you perform n trials, uh, pro probability of success is p and then we asked for uh, the probability of r successes. Now, here it is the reverse, what we are saying is that independent trials are uh, performed, probability of success is p, p between 0 and 1, trials are conducted till r successes occur. So, now it is the opposite, that means now you go on conducting the trials till r successes have occurred. And so, uh, x will be the number of trials required for r successes. Okay. In the binomial case, the trials were fixed and you had to then ask for the probability of r successes. Here, the number of successes is fixed and you are saying, what are the number of trials that you are required, so that r successes um, uh, take place. Okay. So, therefore, if you now take, so here the random variable is the number of trials. So, probability x equal to n and it is very simple to write it down, because so that means, uh, see you will stop your uh, uh, experiment, the moment you hit the r th success. So, that means, uh, uh, up to n minus 1 trials, if I want r successes to occur in n trials, then up to n minus 1 trials, r minus 1 successes should have occurred. right? And therefore, the probability of that is n minus 1 choose r minus 1 here we are using the binomial uh, concept and then p r minus 1, r minus 1 successes and 1 minus p n minus r failures and then the last one is a success. So, therefore, the total number of successes add up to r, but you are here wanting r minus 1 successes to occur anywhere up to the time up to n minus 1 th trial, the last trial must be. So, the nth trial in this case must be a success. And so, your n can vary from r, r, because you want r successes. So, at least r trials have to be conducted. So, therefore, n is r, r plus 1 and so on. And this number can go on up to infinity. Now, since the experiment continues till r successes occur. So, therefore, when you add up n equal to r to infinity, probability x equal to n, this must add up to 1. Right. And therefore, uh, this is a combinatorial argument to say that uh, what we have defined here is a probability mass function. Um, analytically also one can show that this sum will uh, equal 1, but then you require a little more mathematics. So, therefore, uh, we just uh, satisfy ourselves by giving this co combinatorial argument that we will continue this uh, trial till a success occurs, uh, the rth success occurs. Right and also probability x equal to n is uh, non negative for n varying from r r plus 1 and so on. So, this defines a PMF. So, this is a valid PMF. Um, when r is equal to 1, that means, if you are just looking for the first success, uh, then and x is the number of trials required for the first success, then uh, obviously, well you put r equal to 1. So, this becomes 0, well this that becomes 1 and so this is 1 minus p n minus 1 into p. That means, the uh, first n minus 1 trials must end up in uh, failure. So, therefore, 1 minus p raise to n minus 1 and the, uh, the moment you hit a success, you stop. So, 1 minus p raise to n minus 1 into p and n can vary from 1 onwards. Right. X is now called the geometric random variable and the corresponding p m f is the geometric distribution. Okay. Now, um, interesting application of uh, a negative uh, binomial uh, 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 random variable and the distribution. So, uh, this is known as the uh, Banach match problem. Banach was a very famous uh, mathematician and um, uh, he was a heavy pipe smoker. So, um, so that he, uh, he does not waste time in looking for the match box and then lighting up a match to light his pipe. Uh, pipe. He would carry um, uh, 
he would carry two match boxes, one in his left hand pocket and the other one in the right. So, that wherever he puts his hand, he gets a match stick, a match box and then he lights his pipe. So, um, therefore, that is that's how he was dependent on smoking, uh, smoking his pipe. So, um, each time he um, needed a match, he would equally likely take it from either of his pockets, it should be either of his pockets. Okay. So, it was uh, equally likely that he would put his hand in the right hand pocket or on the in the left hand pocket. So, probability of that is the same. And um, now, consider the moment when the mathematician first discovers that one of his matches is match box is empty. Right. So, now uh, assume that both matches uh, in initially carried both the match boxes I should say. Okay. So, both the match boxes uh, initially uh, initially carried capital and matches. What is so, what we are asking what is the probability that the other match box contains exactly k matches. So, that means, um, initially both had capital n number of match sticks uh, in the match boxes and then when he discovers that one of the match boxes is empty, then the other one contains exactly k matches. So, this is what we have to we have to find out the possible uh, pro probability of this event now. So, let us say that um, consider the case when the left hand pocket has k matches left. Right. So, that means, the light, uh, right hand pocket is empty and the left hand uh, pocket has uh, the match box has k matches left. Where here again I should say when the left hand pocket match box uh, is uh, has having uh, uh, k matches left. right? So, I have left out the part match box. Okay. Uh, thus, the mathematician discovers the empty pocket at the see he emptied the n match sticks in the right hand pocket and here he ma uh, emptied uh, n minus k, because k are left in the left hand pocket. And then on the n plus 1 th, when he put his hand in the n plus 1 th or when he takes out the match box uh, at the n plus 1 th time, uh, uh, I mean uh, from the uh, right hand pocket, then he discovers it is empty. So, the total number of trials are n plus n minus k plus 1. Right. So, exactly the situation of a negative. So, taking out a match stick from the right hand pocket as a success. So, we will take taking out uh, as, as a success, we will treat it as a success. Okay. So, let us say that, yeah. So, we will say that uh, the right hand pocket taking out uh, or putting the hand in your right hand pocket uh, and of course, when you put as long as the match box has a stick, you are also taking out a stick, a match stick. So, therefore, whichever way you want to put it, but anyway taking out a match stick from the right hand pocket is a success we are looking for the n plus 1 th success, but where actually he discovers that it is empty. So, that is a consequence of the match box uh, getting emptied, but essentially what we are saying is that putting his hand in the right hand pocket is a success and putting his hand in the left hand pocket is a failure. So, random variable x which is equal to the number of trials required for n plus 1 successes. right? So, this is exactly the case for a negative binomial distribution and what, what we are saying here is that this is actually, uh, the, uh, that means this is happening uh, when you have had this many trials n plus 1 plus n minus k and therefore, by our uh, argument, uh, see the, the last one he discovers that it is, that means at the uh, 2 n uh, minus k plus 1 th trial, he discovers that the left uh, right hand pocket uh, does not uh, match box does not have uh, any sticks left in it. So, uh, this will be 2 n minus k n, right? if you n minus 1 r minus 1 and then 1 by 2 raised to 2 n minus k plus 1. So, this will be the probability that, but then uh, since um, uh, either of the pockets could have uh, emptied first. So, therefore, uh, what we are saying is twice this. So, the required probability is since either pocket can be emptied, required probability is twice of that and so when you multiply by 2, the, this uh, 1 disappears and the required probability is 2 n minus k choose n into 1 by 2 raised to 2 n minus k. Okay. Now, um, again uh, these results I am just giving you without, uh, because uh, handling this thing uh, requires lot of mathematics, we will not do it. So, I will just simply say that uh, 
expected value of a ran negative random variable, uh, which has uh, parameters r and p. That means, r number of successes are required and p is the probability of success, that is r by p and the variance of a negative binomial r comma p random variable is r into 1 minus p upon p square. So, for example, if uh, uh, you are throwing of a die, the x is the random variable, which is the equal to the number of throws of a die required till number 1 shows 5 times. So, your r is 5 here and p, because uh, die we are assuming is a fair die. So, uh, probability of each number showing up is 1 by 6. So, probability of number 1 showing up is 1 by 6. So, our p is 1 by 6, r is 5 and therefore, by this, these two formulae, expected value of x is 5 up in upon 1 by 6, which is 30 and uh, various. So, that means, uh, at least uh, the expected value that expected number of trials required to uh, uh, require uh, uh, throws of the die required. So, that number 1 shows 5 times is 30 and the variance is uh, again by this formula comes out to be 130, uh, 25 into 6. No, this is 150, sorry. So, this is 150. Okay. So, that is about uh, negative binomial and geometric distribution. So, another uh, discrete random variable, which is quite useful is hypergeometric random variable. And so, I will uh, demonstrate this through an example or define this uh, variable and the corresponding distribution. So, sub consider an urn containing n balls capital N balls, out of which uh, m are white and n minus m are black. Okay. Now, a sample of size small n is drawn without replacing the balls, okay. that is important. Uh, the experiment is conducted without replacing the balls. So, I keep taking out the balls and put them aside. Fine. So, now, if x is the random variable, which uh, counts the number of white balls selected. Okay. So, uh, sample of size n is drawn, total number of white balls are m and so, uh, now we look at the uh, probability of uh, the number of white balls being equal to k. So, k can obviously, vary from 0, 1 to m, because there are m white balls. Okay. So, the probability would be, now here you see, uh, we are using the multinomial uh, distribution. So, out of m white balls, you want to select k and out of the remaining capital N minus m balls, you are selecting uh, black balls, you are selecting n minus k uh, black balls. So, your total sample size is uh, small n balls right? and the total number of ways of selecting um, small n balls from capital N balls is n choose n. Right? So, this we have already uh, gone through how to, uh, you know, when, when we were uh, talking about uh, the counting procedures. And so, uh, this is this gives you the num total number of uh, possible ways in which you can select n balls out of capital N balls and this gives you the number of ways in which you can select k white balls from m small m white balls and n minus k black balls from capital N minus m black balls. Okay. <coughs> now, here of course, this is meaning when k is such that n minus k is less than or equal to n minus m. Right, because see, uh, there is some connection between m, k and n. So, obviously, um, I cannot, uh, if my number m is very large, then uh, I can select k number of balls, but then n minus k becomes negative or n minus k is. Uh, uh, so, that means, it has to be less than or equal to n minus m, but then see by convention, if um, n minus k turns out to be greater than n minus m or n minus k is less than 0, by the convention we say that this n minus m choose n minus k is 0. So, therefore, this has a meaning. So, we do not have to worry, right? because then there will be the probability would be if k is such that n minus k is greater than n minus m or n minus k is less than 0, then uh, these probabilities will be 0. And so, there will be no mass attached uh, with that those values of k. So, this is your uh, this thing. And again, um, since, uh, uh, when you we are drawing out a sample of uh, uh, small n balls, uh, a white ball may appear or may not appear and a white ball uh, numbering 1, 2, 3 up to m 
may appear or may not appear. So, this takes care of all possible cases and therefore, uh, this is a uh, this is a genuine this is a valid PMF. So, that uh, that means, what we are saying is that summation probability x equal to k, k varying from 0 to m is equal to 1 and also these probabilities are all non-negative. So, therefore, this is a valid PMF. So, that uh, kind this exercise we must do every time we define a random variable and its corresponding uh, probability mass function. Now, let me just show you an example of a, uh, uh, where we use where we make use of uh, hypergeometric random variable and its distribution acceptance sampling in quality control. So, what you do is of course, I give the numbers here are small, but usually the numbers are much bigger than what I am uh, uh, using here. So, suppose 200 items in the lot uh, some some uh, instrument or something is being delivered by a manufacturer, the whole lot uh, is of size 200 and the claim by the manufacturer is that no more than 10 percent are defective. So, this is the claim. Now, obviously, uh, people uh, do not have time and energy and manpower to actually inspect all the 200 items and usually this number is very big. So, uh, what they what the practice is and that is why it is acceptance sampling. So, what you do is after the shipment is received a sample of size 10 is taken. Again the numbers are all uh, just uh, for convenience sake, but usually uh, uh, there will be more realistic numbers. So, anyway a sample of size 10 is taken without replacement right and if there are at most two defective the lot is accepted. So, you just at random choose a sample of size 10 uh, from this whole lot of 200 um, items and then um, you inspect those 10 items and you have uh, taken out the sample by, uh, without replacement. So, you um, um, inspect those and then in that uh, sample of size 10, if you find 0, 1 or 2 defective, you will uh, accept the whole lot and you will say that it is ok. And if there are more than 2 defective, then you will reject the lot. So, this is what you uh, call acceptance sampling in quality control. Now, um, so let me just show you a, a simple uh, you know uh, computational uh, exercise here I will do. So, that means, for example, if 5 percent are defective in the entire lot, then it carry it contains 10 defective and 190 non defective right. If so, here the claim by the uh, uh, manufacturer is that no more than 10 percent are defective. So, let me consider the case when 5 percent are defective in the entire lot, then it contains 10 defective and 1 because uh, 5 percent of 200 is 10. Okay. So, 10 are defective and 190 are non defective. So, now uh, if you want to compute the number of defectives in a sample of size 10, x is the this, then you want to compute the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, which means probability x equal to 0 plus probability x equal to 1 plus probability x equal to 2. So, this is what you want to compute and see I uh, will just show you the calculations here. Yes. So, um, what I am showing you here the probability of um, uh, number of defectives being small x. So, that will be uh, this is the case when uh, we are say assuming that 5 percent are defective in the whole lot. right? So, then it is 10 choose x and then 190 are non defective from the non defective I am choosing uh, 10 minus x and then uh, divided by 200 uh, choose 10. right? So, this is the hypergeometric uh, uh, hypergeometric uh, uh, probability of choosing um, uh, x defective uh, or the, the, the sample size uh, is containing uh, x defective, our sample size is 10. right? Hence, um, probability of accepting a shipment that has 5 percent defective. So, we are saying if, uh, at most 2 are uh, defective in the uh, sample size of 10. So, that probability would be probability x equal to 0, x equal to 1 and x equal to 2, which I have written down here. And if you look at the numbers, uh, these, these are the 3 probabilities, you add them up and they come out to be 0 0.990935. That means, 
the probability of accepting the whole lot is 0.99. Okay. Now, if there are 10 percent defective, then there are 20 defective in the whole lot and 180 non defective. Okay. So, in that case the uh, hypergeometric probability of x defective in your sample of size 10 would be 20 x and uh, 20 choose x, 180 choose 10 minus x, because you are taking a sample of size 10 and divided by 200 choose 10. So, this will be the probability uh, of uh, having x defective in your sample of size 10, which is taken without replacement. So, therefore, in that case the probability of accepting the shipment that is 10 percent defective, again we want uh, the number of defective in the sample to be not more than 2. So, it can be 0, 1 and 2. So, these are the numbers and here the probability is 0.9347. So, this is less than the probability that we attain for when the shipment had 5 percent defective. Right? Thus, the probability of accepting a 10 percent defective shipment is smaller than the probability of accepting a 5 percent defective shipment. Right? So, of course, obviously, the less the defective, uh, the more the ch chance of accepting the shipment, because the probability of getting 2 at most 2 defective in a sample of size, 10 will, will be smaller if 5 percent are defective and when 10 percent are defective. This is what it is saying and therefore, you can experiment with uh, other values of uh, uh, the number of defective uh, items in the um, whole lot and then you can compute the probabilities accordingly. So, relationships among hypergeometric binomial and Poisson distributions. So, let me show you, I have already shown you how um, binomial uh, will approximate to Poisson, uh, when uh, n is large and uh, the number of trials is large and your n p uh, converges to a uh, moderately small number. So, now here let me show you the interconnection between all these three, um, uh, in fact four uh, discrete random variables that we have uh, discussed so far. Okay. <clears throat> so, now again we say that um, uh, po population is of uh, n objects and um, number of uh, a number of a number of type a objects are there in the population. So, the others are not a type and uh, a sample of size n is drawn without replacement right small n. So, a sample of uh, size small n is drawn without replacement where uh, of course, n has to small n has to be between 1 and capital N and a has to be between 0 and n. And while discussing the um, uh, hypergeometric series, I told you that even if this number is bigger than this, then by convention this is 0 and so there will be no mass. So, we really do not have to worry about the uh, values of <coughs> as to uh, what the uh, when I am writing this oh sorry this is x. So, now if I want to and let p be a by n, this is the proportion of item, I am not using it now, I will be using it later on. Anyway, this is the proportion of items, item of type a, of type a in the original population. So, I am denoting this by p, which I will make use of later on. Now, this probability that is your sample size of small n contains x objects of type capital A. So, that will be choosing from small a num, uh, x, right. a is the total number of type a objects you want to select. So, your sample should have x of them. Uh, so, this is a choose x, then remaining uh, in the population n minus a are the other kind of objects. From this you are choosing uh, n minus x other kind of objects divided by the total ways in which you can choose a sample of size small n from capital N. Okay. Now, just write out these expressions. So, this will be a factorial divided by x factorial a minus x factorial, uh, this will be n minus a factorial divided by n minus x factorial n minus a minus n plus x factorial. Okay. And then uh, this is in the denominator. So, uh, this flips over and you get uh, here uh, in the numerator n factorial n minus n factorial divided by n factorial. Okay. So, let us uh, simplify this expression. What I will do is this n factorial comes here 
then uh, x factorial and n minus x factorial. This I put together and you can see that I am heading towards the uh, binomial distribution. And then um, you see here a factorial divided by a minus x factorial. So, the terms after uh, a minus x my, uh, plus 1 will cancel out. So, you will be left with uh, a a minus 1 a minus x plus 1 right from here and this is gone. Then similarly here this many terms will go away. So, you will be left with n minus a n minus a minus 1 up to n minus a minus n plus x plus 1. Okay. One more from here that will be up to that many terms. And then here similarly n factorial I have used here. Now, here um, n minus n factorial. So, those terms will cancel out and you will be left with n n minus 1 up to n minus n plus 1. So, this is okay. from here to here this is fine. Right. Now, what I am doing is <coughs> yeah. So, um, this term this the, the, these this I can write as n, n choose x right. Then um, from here if I remove a from each of this then this is a raised to x right because this is a a minus 1 a minus x plus 1. So, x minus 1 a is come come from here and this is the uh, x at a. So, a raise to x this comes out. Then similarly, if you remove um, n minus a from here from each of them from each of these terms n minus a. So, that will also be in number n minus x because this is n minus x plus 1. So, uh, when you include this one you will get um, uh, this. So, there is a 1 and then this is this. So, similarly here it was it would be 1. So, 1 minus 1 upon n minus a and this is what you have. And then n raised to n we have taken because here this is minus n plus 1. So, you take out n from each of them and divide correspondingly. So, you will have capital N raised to small n that is this here. Right. Now, um, what I will do is um, yeah, I should have written down this step here. What I am doing is that I will write this as uh, oh sorry, this is this. So, I will write this as um, uh, okay, where do I maybe I will do it here. So, this is n c x then a by n raised to x right out of this and then into divide by n. So, 1 minus a by n raised to n minus x right. So, all this is equal to this which is your binomial probability of choosing um, x items from n and that means your uh, number of defective or number of type a items from the sample size n is this is probability is that. And now, this you see here what we are saying is that x by a is small that means, your a is a big number large number uh, that means, the number of type a objects in your total population is large. Then this number is also small and this number is also small that means, your capital N is very large. In such a situation you can see that all these numbers go to 1 all of them and this also goes to 1. So, this whole con reduces to approximately one number 1 and so this probability hypergeometric probability of choosing a particular type of objects in your sample uh, that probability reduces to the binomial. Now, um, I should have um, did not probably point it out here. See um, when uh, we uh, conduct the binomial experiment we say that um, uh, the trials are occurring independently and then uh, you keep counting the number of successes. So, in other words um, in this situation uh, the binomial experiment would be when you are uh, replacing the balls right because uh, uh, getting a white ball uh, is a success uh, and so in the binomial situation you replace back the ball that you have taken out. So, each time the probability remains the same of uh, getting a white ball which is equal to uh, a by n right. See here a by n p. So, this actually comes out to be this p raise to x 1 minus p raise to n minus x. So, this is what I wrote right. So, therefore, that means um, 
The difference between a hypergeometric and a uh, binomial is that, uh, you know, for small values of the population size, uh, it is uh, with re without replacement the hypergeometric, right. But, um, uh, if you make the population size large and as I said, all these three numbers should be small. In that case, the hypergeometric reduces to uh, approximate is approximated by the binomial uh, probability, right. And um, I have already shown you that binomial can be approximated by Poisson, where we were saying the same thing that um, yes, that this should be small, right. So, in this case n into p, our p is um, uh, our p is a by capital N. So, this number should be moderately small. Then uh, we say that for capital N being large, then we say that uh, the binomial can be approximated by Poisson or the binomial probability uh, goes to Poisson. And uh, here I have shown you that a hypergeometric goes to binomial and by the same argument that I have shown you here, when I talk about and I take lambda to be uh, n into a by n, then you can show by again manipulating the terms that the hypergeometric will go to Poisson. And I already in the earlier lecture, I have shown you that uh, Bernoulli is binomial 1 p right and so uh, the relationship is there that when you t, uh, you when you have uh, um, n when you add up n bernoulli uh, random variables you get the binomial and so uh, this uh, diagram shows you the relationship between the uh, various um, discrete uh, uh, distributions that we have uh, uh, discussed so far so let us now uh, look at the um, uh, other type of uh, random variables which are uh, continuous random variables. So far, we have looked at uh, discrete random variables and their special cases. Now, I uh, will want to uh, descri describe uh, continuous random variables and then again we will look at the special cases of uh, continuous random variables. So, um, essentially uh, these are random variables for which possible outcomes, uh, for which a p a possible outcomes are, are un uncountably infinite. Okay. So, here uh, you cannot count and therefore, for example, if you take a subset in uh, R 2, then the number of points uh, is uh, uncountable. And similarly, if you take an interval on the real line and you consider all possible real numbers and that is an uncountable set. Okay. Um, examples are lifetime of a transistor. So, of course, you do not know when exactly a transistor will fail, but and uh, see you might say that because you have finite clock. So, you can say that okay, it failed at this many, this, but that means you can actually say that the lifetime is finite, but then it depends on your counting system. I mean if you uh, as fine as you fine as you make it, then uh, you know the lifetime you can treat this as a uh, uncountably infinite. Uh, the arrival of a train at a station and so on. So, one can go on adding uh, list to this and as we uh, uh, go through the, uh, uh, we, as we go through the, uh, uh, this topic, we will come across so many uh, continuous uh, random variables. Okay. Now, um, uh, one way to define a continuous random variable would be that suppose there is a non negative function f x defined for all real x in the on the real line minus infinity to infinity having the property that for any set b of real numbers the probability that x belongs to b uh, is integral of the function this non negative function f by dy over b right and uh, uh, so here uh, by our definition we are saying that if uh, x belongs to the whole real line, then the probability of that will be integral minus infinity to infinity and f by d y d y is 1, right. So, we are putting this condition and therefore, by definition f is a pro and so f is now known as the probability density function uh, as opposed to probability mass function, because uh, now this is a continuous case. So, we differentiate between the continuous and uh, discrete by. Uh, so, in this case the uh, uh, function is probability density function and for the discrete case we called it probability mass function. So, this is the um, for the for the random variable x. So, therefore, x is therefore, the if, if there is a function like this and if um, it satisfies these conditions. So, it is a non negative function, then we say that f is the um, probability density function of the continuous random variable x. 
Okay. So, let me uh, give you uh, some more idea about uh, uh, a continuous random variable. Uh, so, you know one can also define a random variable x as a variable whose distribution function is continuous everywhere. So, actually the name uh, continuous random variable has come from here, because the uh, distribution function of a continuous random variable is continuous, that is why we call the random variable continuous. So, actually um, uh, it is not that, uh, uh, so there is nothing uh, about uh, you know calling a random variable continuous or discrete. We actually say random variable is discrete, because it is uh, cumulative distribution function is uh, uh, discrete, that means it has jumps. And we say that a random variable is continuous, if its distribution function is f x is continuous. So, this is everywhere, that is one definition. The another one can be a random variable x is said to be absolutely continuous, if there exists an integrable function f x from r to r, such that f x is non negative for all x belonging to r and its distribution function f x satisfies the equation that f x of x is equal to minus infinity to x integral of f x t d t x belonging to r for any real number. That means, the probability x less than or equal to small x, that probability is obtained as integral of minus infinity to x f x t d t x belonging to r. So, um, and then if you, you see that since um, uh, the distribution function has the property that uh, limit f x x as x goes to plus infinity is 1. So, therefore, you see the value of this integral minus infinity to infinity f x t d t will also be equal to 1. And hence, uh, the sm function small f x that we are saying has to be non negative is actually the p d f uh, for the uh, for the function x. So, uh, either way either you define it through capital F and then you say that f the small f will be the um, p d f or sometimes you may define the small p d f and then uh, small f to be the p d f and then you define the distribution function. Anyway, so uh, the thing is that um, most of the time in, in this course, I will not be saying uh, absolutely continuous all the time, but uh, uh, whatever is absolutely continuous, I will call it continuous. And then I will distinguish between uh, a mixed random variable. So, that means a discrete random variable, mixed random variable and um, continuous random variable. So, what I refer to as continuous random variable will be absolute is actually uh, by definition absolutely continuous, because the way we have been handling we are, we are defining the continuous uh, random variables and the PDFs in this course. Uh, the um, um, uh, the definition, uh, this definition uh, is the right one. I mean, we are following this definition that capital F x x is equal to minus infinity to x f x t d t x belonging to r. So, uh, whichever way, but I just thought that uh, one needs to say a little more than what I had said in the lecture about a continuous random variable. And of course, through examples, we will come to know um, quite a bit more about the various kinds of continuous random variables that we come across and their properties. Now, um, if b is an interval, then a probability x belonging to a comma b will be a to b f x d x. And that is what I am trying to show you, that if this is the curve of f x, then um, uh, this implies that it is actually the area under the curve. Right, and uh, of course I have written it out here that in terms of your yeah okay I'll come to that. So then and if a is equal to b, then this uh, uh, this reduces to probability x equal to a, and that means um, uh, a to so this this sorry be a. So the integral will be from a to a f x dx, and by again a definition of the integral, this is zero. So therefore, uh, mass at a point for a continuous random variable is zero. That all the probability that a continuous random variable assumes a fixed value is zero. This is what we are saying by this, right? And therefore, so I'll come to this point. Is that see the interval I have been writing as an open interval, but here I have written as uh, closed. So it doesn't matter because whether you include the point A or the point B or both, uh, the masses at uh, the individual points at the fixed points A and B are zero. That means no probability attached to. Uh, fixed values of the random co continuous random variable. Therefore, it does not matter whether I write it as this or as I write it as an open interval. Okay. And um, 
then uh, so since uh, uh, the probability x less than or equal to x, uh, I am sorry this is not correct, I want to say here uh, this is x capital X. So, this is so now we are defining the cumulative distribution function or the probability that x is less than or equal to x and this will be in by our definition minus infinity to x of f y d y. So, this is the cumulative distribution function of x and from the figure we can see that uh, uh, this is uh, again f b minus f a. So, uh, that means, this will be the area uh, uh, from minus infinity to a under the function f x that is f a and then this area up to b would be f b. So, you are essentially looking for the area between the uh, in, uh, in the strip and inside the strip. Right. And so, this is area under the curve. Okay. So, um, we have I have shown you that for the um, x is a continuous random variable, then the cumulative distribution function has been defined according to this. And so, we can also then have the concept of, a, uh, of the um, uh, probability uh, in an interval uh, a to b and that is area under the curve. Now, let me just uh, uh, make uh, two particular uh, I mean emphasize two points here that you see um, as opposed to a discrete random variable where it was important whether in an interval when you are talking of a probability of a random variable in an interval, then whether the um, end points are included in the interval or not. For a discrete random variable, it mattered, because every point has uh, some positive probability, I mean or non-negative. Now, for a continuous random variable, you see um, it does not really matter, because there is no concept of a probability at a point. Uh, that, that concept is uh, the, the idea is that at a point the probability is 0. Right? So, therefore, um, whether I say a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b or a strictly less than x less than or equal to b has no uh, has no relevance. So, therefore, it is understood and see that is why I am writing the integral from a to b here right f y d y. So, um, for continuous random variable uh, at a point there is no concept of probability or the mass or whatever one you want or the density, because it is a density. So, we measure it on an interval fine. So, and secondly um, for a continuous random variable we will call it cumulative distribution function that is the proper notation. And here again uh, if some places it may just happen that without realizing it, I may have used the word density, but does not matter. Uh, the idea, the proper notation is that it should be cumulative distribution function, when your random variable x or in fact, uh, for uh, this notation holds for x continuous or discrete random variable. So, the word is cumulative dis, uh, distribution function. We saw that for a discrete random variable, it was um, a summation and here it will be in the form of an integral, because you are computing the probability of the random continuous random variable over an interval. Okay. Now, uh, we want to check that f x has the properties of a CDF. And so, the first thing you want to check is that this limit uh, of f x x as x goes to minus infinity will be 0. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I should have said that this is equal to 0 here. Yeah. And um, of course, this is immediate, because a limit as x goes to plus infinity would be this integral minus infinity to infinity f y d y. And since f is a probability density function by definition uh, minus infinity to infinity, this integral should be equal to 1. So, that part is ok. Now, for this uh, again the argument uh, may look repetitive, we have already used it elsewhere, but let me just repeat it. So, x n let x n be a decreasing sequence such that x n is going to minus infinity. Now, we define the events E n, which are all points in the sample space for which capital X is less than or equal to x n. Then you see again E n this as n goes from 1 to infinity is a decreasing sequence of events and limit E n as n goes to infinity will be empty, because uh, you know as n goes to infinity you will be talking of a uh, event where x is less than or equal to minus infinity. And so, um, uh, there can be no real number which is less than minus infinity and therefore, limit E n n goes to infinity is phi is the empty set. And again by continuity of the probability function, you will say that probability of uh, you know limit probability E n as n goes to infinity uh, is same as uh, limit probability 
e n uh, as n goes to infinity by continuity and therefore, uh, this will be phi, because the probability of a empty set is 0. So, uh, this property is also satisfied and uh, we will verify the other properties also. And for uh, to show that it is monotonic uh, uh, for a less than b, uh, this is uh, f x, we want to show that f x is less than or equal to f b. Right. Now, since uh, capital F x b can be written as minus infinity b, then b being bigger than a, I can break up this integral into minus infinity to a f y d y plus from a to b f. Now, this is non negative, f is a non negative function, this is a finite interval, because b is greater than a. So, again this number is something non negative, therefore, uh, your inter, uh, probability or your f x b is bigger than f x a. Okay. And so, the function capital F is monotonic and therefore, um, uh, it satisfies all the conditions for uh, cumulative density function and uh, uh, hence, we our prop definition is uh, proper here. Now, um, uh, the question uh, if you just define a function like this and you ask whether uh, is it a, is it a, a c d f of some random variable x, then uh, what do we all need to verify? We need to verify that uh, for uh, minus infinity. So, that means, you need to verify that minus infinity to 0 e raise to x by 2 d x, this is equal to what? See, uh, it should from minus infinity to infinity, it should be 1. Uh, this should uh, no, no, sorry. I am showing that this is a CDF. So, this is not PDF, I mean, I am not checking it is PDF. Uh, so, what is happening is e raise to x by 2 limit as x goes to minus infinity, right? Because this is x less than 0. So, as x goes to minus infinity, this should go to 0. So, that is fine, because x goes to minus infinity, e raise to x will go to 0. So, this goes to 0, right? Uh, now, look at uh, limit. 1 minus e raise to x by 2 as x goes to plus infinity. So, what is happening here? This because this portion goes to infinity. So, therefore, this is going to minus infinity and not equal to 0. So, therefore, uh, this does not define a C D F. And so, we can uh, continue uh, I mean uh, one can uh, try to See, uh, if any one of the condition fails to be satisfied here, we will conclude that the function that we are looking at uh, is not a CDF. And similarly, as we have done it for the discrete case also, we uh, check verify when we define a uh, continuous random variable that uh, the uh, whether it is a valid uh, PDF or not probability density function. Then I um, will also try to later on give you examples, where the uh, uh, random variable can be the mixed kind. That means, uh, some for some portion of the real line, it may be uh, uh, discrete, it, be, it may behave like a discrete random variable and then for uh, uh, some points on the real, some portion of the real line, it may be a continuous random variable. Now, another thing that uh, I want to point out is that since you are defining your um, F C D F as this, so necessarily by uh, by the theory of uh, uh, integral calculus, it turns out that this has to be a continuous function. So that is another uh, way of differentiating between. That means for uh, if for a certain uh, part of the real line, your uh, C D F is continuous then we will assume that the corresponding uh, the part of the random variable is a continuous random variable. right? And um, we saw that uh, when uh, it is a discrete random variable, uh, your uh, graph of capital the C D F has jumps and the jumps are equal to the uh, probability of the random variable at that particular point. So, definitely, so therefore, that means you can have now a C D F, which is for uh, in part uh, a step function and in part it is a continuous function. So, I will try to give you examples of uh, such and then, then in that case we will say that the random variable is the mixed kind. So, now that means all kinds of random variables exist discrete, mixed kind and continuous.